Hi everybody, my name is Rod Ambrisi and this is part number three of the Cryptocurrency Revolution documentary series. And in this documentary, I'm going to show you how the government in Switzerland, among the banking system, are restarting the new global financial system. This documentary was made possible by a partnership with Dash Brazil, Blockchain Propulsion and Switzerland Global Enterprise and of course 88 InsurTech. But before we start, I strongly suggest you watch part number one, Venezuela and the Cryptocurrency Revolution, where I spend one week in Venezuela paying everything with crypto from hotel, breakfast, lunch and dinner, gas, taxi and much more. It was a very unique experience where we drew the line from this internet magic money being just an idea to real use on a daily basis. Also make sure you check it out part number two, Colombia and the Cryptocurrency Revolution where I spent one week in Colombia going door to door with the ground team showing how mass adoption really takes place especially with the amount of Venezuelans living and working in Colombia and using crypto to send money back to their families. And now part number three, Switzerland and the Cryptocurrency Revolution where I spent one week in Switzerland interviewing the toppest players of cryptocurrency in the world talking about where's the money really coming from. I hope you enjoy. You know, I love this idea of radical openness, the free exchange of information, the free flow of ideas, where blockchain technology today is allowing people to connect and rethink how we see money in a way that we never thought it before. Is the US petrodollar the biggest scam on the planet today? Do we all agree to believe in a simple piece of paper that says, in God we trust? Without Crypto Valley in Switzerland would not have the position in blockchain and distributed ledger technology it has today. So actually we provide a, the one-stop shop in the canton of Zug. So we are the face or the first contact normally for companies that come to Zug. We're a very young association and secure support um, through membership and sponsorship and uh, the different bodies within Switzerland. Very often these startups are on a technical side very strong, but you need a business case, you need a problem to solve. And we have a whole network in the background for private corporations, consulting firms and, and other guys, and we can give access to that network. Blockchain Propulsion was conceived uh, through our experience as blockchain entrepreneurs having to build uh, blockchain solutions and of course we went through all the different challenges that blockchain uh, projects go through. Uh, we are teaching the startups everything that they need to know to be successful, traction, how to fundraise and so on. Switzerland as a brand or, a, or a, for a country as a brand it is uh, of course the, um, the quality of the country matters as such generally. I mean finding the right legal structure is very important in order to be successful because if your uh, money is locked in a certain entity and you cannot do what you have planned to do, um, you don't have any success. We had a few crypto winters so far. And in between ICOs, IEOs and STOs, pyramid schemes and websites where you can double your Bitcoin. A lot of people lost a lot of money. And that's good. Lesson learned. Bitcoin is not a game for you to buy low and sell high. Bitcoin is a system to replace the failed monetary system where central banks fail the people. But now, it can be stopped. And so far, the ICOs and STOs have been uh, the main use case for blockchain. So from these types of operations, other types of operations are an offspring or actually develop even faster um, if these um, offerings are successful. I think one of the main reasons companies are coming into Switzerland is the security. For example, not only the security in, in uh, our political system, but security in the, our legal framework. For example, everything is regulated by FINMA or, and also by the government. The government has produced uh, a new report about blockchain for the, uh, to introduce new changes in the, in the next years. And now also the FINMA, our state uh, supervisory um, authority in Switzerland, has also produced guidelines to, uh, to explain how crypto assets are treated in Switzerland. 
Switzerland is a very important country for DAS and DAS Core Group in particular. There are many contact points between Switzerland and the project. The first one would be the trust. As most people in the community know, DAS Core Group is owned directly by the network, by the masternodes to be more specific, but without needing to disclose who they are. This was achieved through uh, this trust in New Zealand, which is administered from Switzerland, from Geneva. Uh, this was a requirement of the New Zealand Trust Law in order to obtain certain benefits and Switzerland is a great market for trustees. I think it's incredibly important because crypto lives outside of the borders of one particular country, right? Uh, blockchain is by its nature decentral um, and what happens very often is that people get stuck in a very small echo chamber and they hear the good ideas that are, seems like good ideas for Switzerland. Um, if we expand that echo chamber from people from Latin America, Canada, Korea, Singapore, or Shanghai, Hong Kong, um, then the echoes uh, become much different, right? The, the feedback that you get on ideas, business venture capital, uh, how to get things done uh, is really uh, quite different, right? Blockchain space being so varied globally, worldwide, it's important to have these sort of connectors uh, in the industry. And what we do is we design, build, and invest in blockchain. So when people are bringing ideas to us, we're able to take a look at them both from a technological standpoint, an organizational standpoint, and an investment standpoint and having that amount of reach across the industry allows you to accept more and more project ideas in. Because in Switzerland it's more advanced in terms of regulation so they have done a framework for the crypto assets and uh, crypto uh, companies uh, as a blockchain companies you can find only uh, in Switzerland uh, opening of a crypto account with a bank and do the settlement between fiat and crypto. The reason for that is the regulators, were, which are very welcoming and less burdensome, they actually help the, the companies to set up a business, whereas in, for instance, uh, in Germany, where I come from, uh, it's heavily regulated and they were actually the first ones in Europe, to the, the Germans, to, to uh, set up some rules. Uh, but they put a pretty high bar. They, they treat crypto companies uh, uh, like traditional financial companies with all the, the regulatory burden that comes with it. Switzerland, from a historic uh, perspective, always had a, a huge banking uh, uh, ecosystem. So I think it's wise for, uh, for Switzerland uh, that they uh, adapt uh, the crypto and the Crypto Valley uh, has been established in Zoom. KPMG is actually advising uh, many companies from around the world of setting up their European and international headquarters in Switzerland. And uh, what we believe is important that due and diligent advice and services are very relevant if you want to start in a proper way your business in Europe. We went through a regulatory process where we uh, checked with the regulator and show the regulator how you can tokenize real estate within the existing laws and regulations of Switzerland and of Liechtenstein. And that process took around eight months, so that was quite tough for a startup. Um, but we used that time to already build the product. Um, and uh, yeah, like you mentioned, we uh, successfully executed that early uh, this year in March uh, on the first property not too far away from here. Well, I can talk to you about Liechtenstein. Um, one of the main issues that we have in the blockchain space is legal certainty. And in many parts of the world, you do not have legal certainty uh, when you're going to start a new blockchain project. So when you go to the regulator, the regulator doesn't give you any clear indication if you can or cannot do the project. And in Liechtenstein, we've developed the Blockchain Act. And in the Blockchain Act is a full legal framework which gives companies legal certainty about what they're going to do and if it's legal or not to do it in the country. And so we conceived um, a, a, a concept based on uh, a number of different uh, blockchain entrepreneurs to be able to share our best practices, lessons learned and how we can actually uh, launch successful uh, blockchain projects. So it's been based on, on, on the shared best practices that we want to be able to pass on to other uh, projects. Information today allows us to communicate instantly and get news from any individual across the planet. 
the technology to all this fits in our pockets and now this tool is helping people organize themselves against power against authority against unfair doing and we've seen protests like this in argentina to hong kong to chile to brazil to occupy wall street bitcoin is the largest peaceful protest in history the most powerful weapon to defund governments and this can be used by anyone Today's technology allows us to communicate and connect with people instantly across any platforms on the other side of the planet. All this can be done via video, text message, or you can always watch a presentation online. But most important, with the Switzerland-Brazilian mission wants to accomplish, is to give every single investor or startup company, by presenting and connecting them with the most important key players today in Switzerland from startup, incubators, law firm, and the entire banking system, and extract the best of this opportunity and really immerse themselves into the Switzerland culture. There's no price into having a face-to-face face conversation with those people and doing so switzerland will give you the main structure for you to come over and establish your business with confidence because you have all the proper legal tools to do so well one of our goals as a switzerland global enterprise and the swiss swiss business hub in brazil is to attract companies and attract business to switzerland so we have a mandate from the Swiss government to do so. Uh, the idea behind it is to promote the Swiss clusters because we are always trying to innovate and we're trying to bring innovation into the country, into Switzerland. And we were the first payment gateway in Brazil to deal with uh, uh, fiat and cryptocurrencies. And Switzerland, we came here to, to understand what is happening and it was becoming like a, a super friendly environment for cryptocurrency companies, for blockchain technology, and this is, was the main reason that we came to Switzerland, especially to Tug. Well, there's several reasons why I choose Switzerland instead of Brazil. Uh, the first one, um, it is because of the regulation towards FINEMA that allows blockchain businesses to operate without being in a gray zone area, so here in Brazil, it's, we don't have a clear definition. So this brings risk for investors. So this is one of the reasons the regulations towards blockchain first. Second, because it is a decentralized democracy. That means uh, that is the most close type of a government related to a blockchain decentralized technology as well. So a decentralized government for a decentralized business. There is a concrete uh, real desire from the regulators, from the, um, the business and for the, the, the whole uh, ecosystem to provide something uh, re reliable and some, something more easier in terms of to open a, a crypto company. Is Bitcoin the first major step towards the separation between money and state? Is this fight against governments or against the banks? Who is going to be the first one to really embrace crypto nationwide? Which president will take the first step to say, we accept Bitcoin? It's because of an extremely proactive regulatory regime uh, that we have in Switzerland, legalizing and legitimatizing um, the correct and applied use of cryptocurrencies, blockchain applications, decentralized markets, and digital asset custody, right? So I think that if it wasn't for that proactive stance, um, there would be uh, not very interesting to build uh, businesses here, right? Because you put a lot of passion and, and things start to happen when people stop talking about it and start doing it. We don't provide actual um, special benefit or subsidies in order to attract companies. But what we do is we strive for the best package for businesses in general because in the first place it's not on the administration or the government to decide that company X will get subsidies or company Y does not because we don't know which business model will succeed. So our strategy is to provide the best the best, uh, let's say, uh, parameters or the best 
environment, business environment for any companies and the market will do its magic. I mean, we're working with regulators, we're working with uh, the local cantons, we're working with uh, different individuals in the government. So if somebody has a business, they want to set it up here, they can just drop us an email or give us a call, whatever it might be, and then uh, we get them in touch with the right potential partners and then, yeah, take it from there. Uh, it's, it's fundamental uh, that we do work very close. So we uh, liaise very closely with various uh, legal firms, as well as very closely with the government. So we are trying to operate in a compliant manner, uh, but also sharing those compliance uh, aspects with, uh, with our startups. So we work very close with, with those uh, key stakeholders. We work very closely with the cantonal governments of, uh, in the Greater Zurich area predominantly. That's uh, Canton Zug, Zurich, Canton Uri, Canton Schwyz, um, Canton Arau, um, and also Luzern. Um, and also we have uh, the academic bodies that are present in those cantons as well. We have a very, very good relationship. Each canton is responsible for themselves to bring foreign business into the canton and each canton wants to position itself at the forefront. If uh, a prospect is coming in, you want to make sure you're on that short list. The government as such uh, is what they do is they're very open-minded and they are testing if there are things where they can go with the time. Uh, we are uh, in disruptive times and there will be changes and in Switzerland traditionally our administration is very lean. There is not too many rules for things. On the contrary, we're not subsidized a lot. There is no subsidize for a special technology or so. There is um, a moderate tax, but uh, we are um, lean organized. And therefore, with this lean thought, uh, also for cryptocurrency, um, the, the, the thinking goes, what has to be done in order to offer new thoughts, new technologies, um, a new path? The challenges for cryptocurrency companies is actually to understand the reg uh, regulations. In many cases there are no regulations in place. That's why it is important that companies like ours, which have good relationships with the regulators, are able to advise them and to help them to show them the way into doing business in this new and exciting and fast-growing field of financial industry. Satoshi Nakamoto only needed nine pages to create the Bitcoin white paper. Bitcoin has exposed how many intelligent people don't actually understand economics, money, finance or technology. First they ignore us, then they laugh at us, then they fight us, but in the end they gotta buy Bitcoin from us. At that time, 2013, a bunch of young guys came to our office. One was Vitalik, uh, Joe Lubin, Charles Hoskinson, uh, Gavin Wood, etc. And they, they talked about decentralization and we didn't understand anything actually. Uh, but uh, we thought that young guys, they have apparently brilliant ideas. So we tried to understand, we tried to work with them, tried to educate them on the legal frameworks, on, on some regulatory topics, uh, on some uh, AML topics, uh, in order to come to a, to a legal structure that suits their purpose, but also protects them for, from uh, doing, doing it wrong and, 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 and being, being challenged later on. And uh, what we've learned is, uh, is a lot about, uh, about the technology, about decentralization, about uh, decentral aspects of, of, of algorithms, of smart contracts, etc. And that was a whole new world to, to us and uh, by now I think we we are educated, we could educate the regulator here in Switzerland. And I think that's one of the advantages of Switzerland, that the regulator knows the technology, we know the technology and we can support the, the projects in appropriate ways. There have been uh, several working groups on a national level. An outcome of this has been the new DLT law. The law is uh, presumably going to enter into force uh, next year. And there um, certain adjustments to the existing law on the civil law side, but also on the regulatory side are going to even further facilitate the enterprises on the blockchain and STO side. So easy to assess the regulator and say, oh, I, 
I, I plan to do that. I want to do that in this way. And they are very clear and objective to say, you can do that, you, can, you can't do that. So you can move your business, you can understand the whole thing and prepare your company to be open here. Yes, I would say that it's very important to have a regulator who at least offers commentary, public commentary, as FINMA has done, and then to have the different states in Switzerland, like the state Canton of Zug has done, and being proactive in adopting that commentary for business purposes and for commercial usage. So having that type of sponsorship means you also have that type of understanding. You also have a bilateral relationship between the blockchain community here, blockchain pr uh, propulsion and the FINMA, to go back and forth when we're talking about building relationships with regulators. We don't want to wait till they're at the point of penalization or wait till at the point of prosecution to have that conversation. They want to offer us good advice so that we can get in early into the market, generate those solutions for them, then come back to them in a nice reiterative conversation without the fear of penalization as we see in other markets such as in the U.S. Government, when they are incubating and accelerating, actually they will be raising up these new startups and new companies to accelerate the other enterprises and big companies that are being ages inside the market doing nothing to, to elevate themselves. Well, I, I think that the main problem is that you see that many countries are losing opportunities for innovation. Blockchain is the next wave of innovation. All those countries that push away these blockchain companies are losing in the innovation wave. And you see, uh, two weeks ago I presented at the United Nations. And we presented two cases in blockchain for impact. One was the case of Liechtenstein and the other of the Marshall Islands. Why? Because the Marshall Islands is the only country in the world to have legal tender as crypto. And Liechtenstein, because it's the only country in the world to have a full legal framework for crypto and blockchain. And you see that the smaller countries are the ones that are making the greatest leaps and bounds because they are the ones who want to capture that innovation. So what's happening is you're starting, you want to develop in Brazil, you want to develop in Argentina or in Peru a project. You have no legal certainty if what you're going to do is legal or not. And in Switzerland and in Liechtenstein in particularly, it's very clear. Uh, the, the government is supporting uh, uh, all these businesses because at the end the regulator wants to have, uh, uh, want to know what's going on in the projects, especially to protect the consumers, the end consumers. So there, there's a lot of regulations going on in the banking and the financial area, but uh, we also need some regulations in the, in the blockchain space, especially, especially when you look at, uh, let's say, uh, how are you doing your KYC, know your customer process, uh, the AML, anti-money laundering processes, how are all those things getting captured by all the projects what you're seeing in the market. Switzerland is a very small country and uh, has always uh, put himself in a position of a global player. So the idea is to bring people here to Switzerland, to bring innovation, to bring uh, qualified human resources, uh, to open up companies and make the, the, the Swiss environment even more dynamic and innovative. So that the idea of exploring the uh, fintech and blockchain sectors is very important for the, for the Swiss government because this is one of the sectors that is striving now and the, uh, Switzerland put himself, itself as a safe haven for uh, companies that want to operate in these two sectors here. The support from the government since the beginning it's priceless. They are always open to, to, to talk to you. You can easily reach any person that you would like to speak of. Uh, the banks is like another chapter. Uh, this is still an issue but I think it's uh, evolving? Well, uh, there we are um, uh, treated as a client, totally different to what happens in Brazil. So uh, when we arrive there, they try to connect us to the ecosystem, to um, incubators, to accelerator programs, to potential investors, uh, to the regulator itself. So you can go straight to the regulator, talk to them, and they uh, try to figure out a way for you to operate legally in the country instead of saying you're banned or this is not allowed, uh, you cannot do it here, like happens here.
regulation here is very clear. The regulator is also willing to uh, negotiate and understand things. Um, they are very well versed in blockchain. There's a lot of projects, companies and associations doing great work here in that space. As a crypto company, as a crypto investment uh, platform, uh, it's pretty new. We don't have a benchmark to follow or a framework. We have to uh, move as the, the law and the government moves. Recently, more money was printed in one day than the entire Bitcoin's market cap took 10 years to grow. We are having a huge liquidity problem among the banks. We are in a blink of a major recession, if not a depression. How are you preparing yourself for this? Uh, maybe starting with the banking system in 2018 and even today it's really hard to find a partner in Switzerland. When you're talking about blockchain in combination with tokenization, a lot of doors remain shut. So we actually went to Liechtenstein, uh, to Bank Frick, for our partnership with the bank. Obviously, because we're in a regulated environment, you need a bank. Uh, everybody always talks about cutting out middlemen, removing banks. Uh, that's not going to happen, definitely not in the beginning. Um, so we're very uh, lucky actually that Liechtenstein is so close by and there's a, a positive environment for startups like us. Um, the positive thing is that the regulator in Switzerland is very approachable, um, also very, very knowledgeable about the technology as such and very open to new business models. Um, so obviously it took quite a lot of time and money to do the rulings in a proper way uh, together with our legal partner. Um, but nevertheless, eight months is still quite, quite okay. Um, and I had a very positive experience with the financial regulator. It took less than 24 hours for the European government, central banks, United States government to start screaming about how Facebook cryptocurrency can't and must not work. And this proves how Satoshi Nakamoto was a visionary and since the beginning decided to remain anonymous. But it doesn't matter what governments think or do or try to stop a project. In the next few minutes, another block will be mined. So the next step or the next um, gear shift will be with regards to larger and more established institutions from the legacy world actually and uh, moving into the space, investing and buying up uh, different uh, cryptocurrencies or, or tokens that they deem are of value and they're providing a good uh, example of use case. What the blockchain will enable in the future is that you can invest in assets which are not investable at the moment or only on a very high cost. Investors are kind of risk averse so because they're not familiar with this new asset class and that's where they're saying okay I'd rather invest my money into uh, bonds or in, in, into the stock market that's why we see for example those bubbles or real estate as well and I think it's just a matter of time until they realize this is a new asset class that we can invest in and diversify. There are only a few reasons why Bitcoin could go to zero, but there are tons of reasons why Bitcoin could go to a million dollars, maybe more. And there's no reason why Bitcoin should stay at these current prices. Stop working for paper, people. Cryptocurrencies are the future. How can you, as a startup with a new technology, how can you connect yourself to the traditional market? and offer solutions to them and, 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 and have access that the traditional business will also bring the money to your startup. But that can come from anywhere. I mean, you already see now banks here who uh, accept uh, cryptocurrencies, who offer cryptocurrency accounts where you can trade cryptocurrencies. So they're interested to maybe have more innovation, innovative things and they will just pay, you know, for the costs. We are also in times of um, crowdfunding, sharing economy. So I think it's, it's the, the mass that will decide where bigger money is going to be harvested, basically. Um, you know, just because it's simple, um, payments isn't 
free, right? People that go in and are used to touching things with a card, right? Behind that, there are several organizations and a $17 trillion industry annualized and a massive amounts of infrastructure to make all of that work, right? Now, all of that is going into an economy um, that could be much simpler, much more transparent, right? And it's just, you know, just because we have uh, all these regulations doesn't necessarily mean that we don't have incidents of money laundering, uh, like Danske Bank and some others that have come up very prominently with massive amounts of money laundering uh, over a very long a period of time. So um, I think that what you see is that there are ways that, that we could do this more inclusively to, with, for financial inclusion and at a much lower cost with a lot less friction, right? Less friction means less financial market, uh, you know, better, more efficient markets, which means more adoption, right? So. Over time, and we already see tendencies, it's also going to come from institutional investors, given the very low interest rates, at least uh, in Europe. So one of the biggest uh, interesting things over here is that uh, we have here money from all parts of the world and and this money is searching for a good opportunity we have a we have an open and friendly re relationship with regulators with tax authorities so it's not like uh, let's say in the US where they uh, consider you to be a criminal and you have to prove that you're not here it's more like open and friendly and they're very pro business and they know that there are questions that are uncertain and they want to clarify it with you in order to get the solution and uh, I think that's very important. Uh, we've gone back to more of a realistic uh, approach and, and, and thereby we do believe the big investments will uh, come into the space again but I think people have uh, burnt their fingers so they're much more cautious in how they invest today, where they invest. Well the big players that we see currently now that is going to fundamentally change blockchain from the last year to now has been the banking industry financial sector so that current industry today is about 80% commercial bank-to-bank -bank transfer and only 20% retail individual the blockchain space is exactly opposite it's 80% person-to-person -person retail and only about 20% commercial so if you're a bank as a traditional uh, portfolio of services that's already in an 80% saturated market and you're looking for anywhere else in the world to launch a service, a community, an exchange, a coin, a tokenization, security token offer, or utility token offer, you look at this and you say, this is the market you want to be in because you have growth, exponential growth opportunity here that you don't have in your traditional portfolio. When security tokens being uh, launched in a way that makes all the investors and institutional investors feel uh, secure and see the appreciation and proceeding coming to them in a, a normal way as they've been receiving it or maybe better way then you will see all these transactions will be coming and flowing and the deals will be uh, flowing as what's happening today but in a, in, a, in a small scale it will be bigger scale later uh, if you look at wealth management right if you look at family or family offices family offices are, are uh, reconsidering where they should put their money in uh, is, is their money making uh, uh, a good uh, uh, dividend or not with stocks? Uh, is stocks uh, volatile or not? Uh, uh, should they uh, spread more and go into this new area like uh, crypto or blockchain platforms, technology uh, uh, in, uh, as such? So I think uh, um, it will be shifting from one pot to the other pot. I think it's actually already happening for quite a while. I mean, uh, the, the prices of cryptocurrencies are more depending on the mood of investors in the US and in Europe than from investors in, in Venezuela, uh, as you mentioned. But in the end, it's uh, maybe small dash holders in, in uh, Venezuela that will profit from institutional investors in, in Europe you're starting to see the, the big money in the world is with institutional investors and you're starting to see these institutional investors starting to invest more and more into blockchain when you have a JP Morgan that launches its own cryptocurrency and I traveled to Honduras uh, last month met with one of the largest banks of Honduras and they were onboarding on the JP Morgan blockchain you're starting to see that this transformation is real and it's happening at a very very high speed now what we need to do and this is what we do at a eternity blockchain is I'm responsible of bringing that innovation now to Latin America and we're launching now in Uruguay, our Latin American hub, 
and in Honduras, our Central American hub. And from there, what we're going to do is create a bridge between Liechtenstein and Latin America. Why? Because you can develop your project in Latin America and you can raise your capital in Liechtenstein in a safe and legal manner. Well, first of all, I mean, these are uh at the end of the emerging regions of the world. People currently, two billion are un unbanked. They may uh, use directly non-traditional financial uh, industries to actually do uh, business and to exchange uh, assets. Uh, but you mentioned it rightly, I mean, uh, some of these countries are failed nations. So here, they, they, we see a potential for alternative financing opportunities. In countries where you have an established and well-working financial industry, I don't see uh, too big of a potential for an alternative currency. Well, there uh, in Switzerland now we have a kind of phenomenon. There is uh, several banks uh, applying to have a, a, a crypto banking license together. I can name it, for example, Siba Bank. Um, I can name uh, Bitcoin Suisse. They are, they are applying to become a bank, a crypto bank in Switzerland. Uh, so I, I would say that is, um, if you compare with many other countries, they are regulating banking business operating with crypto and blockchain. So this is something else. Um, and when you compare with other jurisdictions, for example, um, we see uh, several initiatives like here in Brazil with XDEX, for example, uh, there is one exchange uh, that belongs to XP Investments uh, related to Itaú Bank. I think the banks, especially the private ones, they need to reinvent themselves uh, what's the reason for a, a, a foreigner to put their money here? And the reason for everyone to do this would be basically a cost because even it would not play as a replacement to local currency here. It could play as a much cheaper and efficient way to uh, do payments. And because there's a lot of money at stake, it's not unlikely that that would happen here. I think the, the current financial infrastructure, so especially the banks, they are probably working on something there themselves while they stop startups from opening accounts so they can slowly, they can slow down this process. And to put it very simple, they have to put more on the pressure. So for example, what Facebook is planning to do, although it's far away from a cryptocurrency, um, is very important to put more pressure on banks and make them rethink their business models and be more open for tokenization and blockchain as such. Um, and on the other hand, and that's what we're working on as well, um, bring out more use cases, increase the demand, from the client side, which automatically means they have to adapt in order not to lose their clients. Um, so that's what, in short, I think should be happening. The money comes from everywhere. Switzerland is open to investments from everywhere in the world. And we have seen with the new wave of uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, the ICOs in 2017, 2018, that there was a huge influx of money into the country uh, because Switzerland is an open economy. Uh, we're talking about a country that has almost 40 uh, free trade agreements with different countries apart from the European Union and uh, 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 there's a free flow of uh, influx of, uh, of money coming here and there's a lot of uh, financial services going on. So I think this is, uh, when you said that Switzerland is known for chocolate from big banks, uh, uh, that's an image that we want to change and we are changing it now because Switzerland is going to become very famous. It's going to already the leading country regarding blockchain and fintech technologies. Most important, it doesn't matter where you are, who you are, or if you like it or not, or even if you agree or not, Bitcoin doesn't care for you or me. Bitcoin is a system, unstoppable code. And all I can tell you, it's happening. It's happening faster than anybody can possibly imagine. Join us.